no product is ever immune from being toppled, right? No, for and sure. Think, or even or even uh, the idea can be taken and absolutely upgraded by a different. You can company. be stolen in a, yeah. in a second, right? So, I mean, especially it, with China. <laughs> <laughs> well, with every yeah, yeah, all, yeah, yeah. all companies. Mm -hmm. I think you see this across the board. I mean, look at I mean, what is what is fundamentally different between Uber and Lyft. Yeah, nothing. Right? They're just two companies that are trying to get your your rideshare business, mm -hmm. right? What's fundamentally different between Postmates or Uber Eats yeah, or any, for, they're yeah. nothing, right? They're all the same kind of idea. Now it's just fighting this marketing game or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so did that, did that drive you to think about, you know, back to your company yeah. and your, the device that you invented? Yeah. Uh, was there another invention or something similar to the device that you, besides like a water meter? Yeah. Because that's the only thing so, I could So, yeah, imagine. that's the primary uh, competitor that we have is is a water meter. <laughs> I mean, the best, one of the best leak detection uh, devices that we have right now is a very high water bill, right? And it's it's yeah. how I came up with the idea as well. It's right? it's funny that you mentioned that my, um, my father-in-law, yeah. he was looking at his bill and from one month to the next, it went up maybe two hundred dollars and he's like, i don't understand exactly did they get something wrong and he's like calling the company yeah. trying to figure out and nobody knows and then yeah. he finds that there was a leak yep and, and that's generally what happens yeah right and and kind of what our device does is it alerts you when that happens mm -hmm. earlier than when your bill comes right cool. so that you can make a decision on what needs to happen next um and i think part of it is uh you, you kind of this is where the technology leads right it's a data Right. Data can be used in a lot of different ways. Right. Guys like Facebook and Instagram use it one way. We look at that data and say, is this water being used or not? And if it is, did you mean to use it? And if you didn't, let's do something about mm -hmm. it. Right. And that's kind of like how our thought process or our, our, our you know, artificial intelligent kind of algorithms kind of go about this. Right. We look at. Did, the, did you mean it like we, we working with a school district, for instance, and one of the things that we look for them is. Did water turn on at three in the morning? Well, if it did, probably didn't mean to, right? There was yeah. no students there at three right. in the morning, right? Um, and Janitor so should be long gone. Exactly. Everybody's gone. So what's going on? Or, hey, this water was on for an hour. Like, there's no reason a water water should be on for an hour, mm -hmm. right? So it should be investigated, right, right? Right. And that's all we're kind of doing. And that's cool that, that you're doing that because one of my questions, you know, trying to prepare for the yeah. uh, podcast today was, uh, did you do this solely out of? like a business standpoint, like to make money. I mean, you already answered that question in the beginning of the podcast sure. saying, you know, it wasn't to make money. It was more of a conservation effort to conserve water because it's to my passion it's, about. Yeah. yeah. People and people think it's especially in a already developed countries, you yeah. turn on the faucet, you can drink out of it. Yep. You can't do that everywhere, especially outside of the United States. Absolutely. I mean, even in and, some cities. In the and States. I think it's just, we, we've gotten very used to this idea that water is always going to be there. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily true. I mean, like I said, we're, right now there are definitely, there are cities right now around the world where water is like done. Flint. Like, fl I mean, th those well, guys contaminated, are contaminated yeah. right? Then you have places like in Brazil, you have places in India right yeah. now that literally cities are, they're done with water. Like they have no groundwater left. They're, they're either bringing it in by truck or train or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, for, from my company perspective, I think, I think as any entrepreneur, you have to look at the problem and say, look, I want to do good, but you also, you also need to make money in order to continue doing that, right? It's why charities and things like that, they, they have to do fundraising events. Right. You have to collect money in order to do the good, right? But you also have to, that's the necessary evil. So it's the necessary evil we have too, right? We have to kind of market our product and sell our product mm -hmm. and make money on it. But kind of like I said, our, our original goal is not to save our customers money. Our goal is to save our customers water and understanding that they, they're hand in hand, right? right. If we save you water, then we're probably going to save you money too. Exactly. Right? And what blows my mind about, especially, you know, you, you alluded to it a little earlier in the conversation about climate change and mm -hmm. everything that's going on, whether you believe it or not. And these companies, these big oligarchy companies that are just, uh, you know, they're more for profit rather than mm -hmm. conserving. It's like almost something. Okay. Well, let's just take your invention. For example, you can save money by saving water, but also make money because you're getting more, you know, more bang for your buck. 
and you're conserving water. So why not kill two birds with one stone by helping the environment as well as helping your pockets? There's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. And that's kind of how we look at this problem as yeah. well. Right. And when we do our, you know, any kind of sales pitch or anything that we go in, we say, look, we know you want to have an ROI, right? You want to, you want to have a return on your investment. We get that. And we're here to provide that. And if we can save a little water and do good for the environment, hey, win-win, yeah, right? And, and sure. people are like, yeah, cool. I'm not against that, right? The studies, and I, I, was, I don't know if I mentioned this to you when we were talking last time, but um, you know, there's, there's studies done, which I think they're kind of uh, pointless, but they're kind of like you know, 80 some odd percent, 85, 88% of the people would rather support a brand that does good than a brand that does bad. Obviously, it makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. You, of course, if you had the option to spend your money on two feel, identical items, feel good yeah, and knowing that exactly. at least your dollars go into something positive, and so that's kind of, uh, and and I think that's, I mean, for me, right, I look at a lot of these companies prior or out right now, I, I think their their fo- sole focus is is money, right, and I don't know, maybe I'll be eating my words in a little bit, right, but I, I think ultimately, if we can if we can do good, why not? And, yeah. and make money while we're doing it for sure. Right. And I think that's going mean, to, we'll see, hopefully maybe, and, and maybe that's going to be the positivity that comes out of things like social media and all that is that you, you get more visibility into companies and what they're doing. And then, you know, you can now make a decision on whether or not you want to continue supporting that company for whatever values or whatever they have. I mean, I don't know. Look at, look at the NBA right now, right. With yeah. all this stuff going on and, sure. and kind of and China, we, China, and China being and, outspoken on anything that you have an opinion on. And, yeah. and, you know, you just see, right, like player, I mean, biggest names in the in the world, right, LeBron, and he's getting he's flack getting, right now yeah. online, right? People were like, oh, you're you're supporting this or that. Yeah, your sell out. Pocket, your sell out, like, your yeah. pocketbook versus. So it happens. But I, and I, like I said, I think it's a necessary evil. You have mm-hmm. to make money in order to continue doing what you want. I mean, all of us do. Yeah. Right. So what was the idea process or the thinking process, if you don't mind, uh, coming up with this yeah. invention and this idea for your company. I think step one, right. Is you identify the problem, right. Right. In anything you do in life, right. You step one, what's the problem how and then how can we fix it? Right. And then you kind of brainstorm where are the, what are the ways that we can fix it? And then from there, um, looking at, okay, I have this problem. I have five different ideas of how I can fix it. And then you kind of research high level, like what technology exists or, or what are ways that I can kind of implement this idea that I have, right? And then and then once you kind of get to that technology, then you kind of start drilling down a little bit more, like which technology is feasible, which technology is this, that. So that's kind of how my thought process works. And it works uh, similarly for, I think, any, any problem I, I solve. Uh, I think this is something that was always taught to us at Apple, right? That, that yes, you're going to deal with complex problems every single day, but it's not about solving the problem in its entirety. You, you pick a small section, you solve that first, and then you move on to the next section. You mm. solve that, you solve that, you solve that, right? It's like cleaning a house. Like you yeah. can't just clean your house. You've yeah. got to start in a corner and then work your way out, right? And, and kind of clean up this part of the, the room and then that yeah, part of the room, then it. this part of the kitchen, then sink, then, the, you know, and you get through it. That's um, a good analogy. So that's kind of how I looked at, when I looked at this problem and, and there was a lot of revisions. You know, we went through a lot of, um, you know, oh, here's a really cool idea. But, oh, the technology doesn't support it. Or if we want to do this, then we have to have like, these like massive batteries and, and our device, like then it becomes too expensive mm-hmm. and the device won't be profitable for like sale or whatever. Right. So you're constantly balancing that. And I think that's, um, I think the biggest challenge, uh, I think starting a company or, or anything, right. Is balancing all of that because you can have all the best ideas in the world, but if you can't implement them, it doesn't right. matter. Right. And execution is where it's all at. Yeah. Right. Uh, ideas are dime a dozen execution is where it's at. And, and I think there's a lot of people who, you know, I, my friends will come to me like, oh, I have this great idea for an app or this or that. And I'm like, cool, like execution. Like, how are we going to do it? Yeah. Like, well, no, you can do that. I'm like, that's not, that's, that's right, a lot of work. Right. Right? It's like, oh, you're yeah. just going to pay me for the yeah, idea. Exactly. That, yeah. that, that doesn't that, work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but I think that's, you know, where you got, again, leverage the resources you have, right? I leverage the resources I got back from my career. I leverage the resources of friends and family. I've leveraged the resources of, of things like Google, yeah. there's nothing wrong with searching on Google for an idea and see, Hey, does something exist? Does not exist? How can I do this? Mm-hmm. Um, finding the right, you know, partners to work with, whether they're physical people in your circle or, or manufacturing partners or shipping partners. Whoever. Yeah. That was one of the things when we were talking that, um, almost surprised me a little bit because I know working with other people, there's always going to be conflicting ideas mm-hmm. or 
somebody's going to take the load of the work and the other one's going to expect a uh, even return. Yeah. And that's not reality. So how was your experience in doing this? I know you said that this is basically, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, all your idea and you kind of put it together, but uh, how is it working with other people who might want to change your idea or add or take away something? I think as, as any kind of like, uh, leader or manager whoever whatever you want to call it, it you, you bring people around you because they have good ideas mm-hmm. right and you can't be afraid of that um i think it's important to have a strong vision right of what you want to do but then you have to kind of drive your team to to get there so i work with a lot of people and like i said my vision number one is we have to save water so is the decision we're making going to help us save water if it is then let's investigate it further right if it's not then let's think about it some more, right? Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy getting challenged by my team, but that's also why I try to surround myself with really smart people, uh, smarter than I am in, in areas, right? Because it's like, all right, I don't know this. You know this better than I do. Explain to me where I'm wrong, Yeah. right? And I, and I A think- A lot of ego checking. It's uh, always, yeah. yeah I, think, I think anytime you, you know, obviously you have to be confident in your decisions, right? And when you go forward, you go forward full steam. But at the same time, you can't be so stubborn where you're like, I always know I'm always right and whatever. Have you ever been in the position where there was a conflicting idea? And if there was, how did you solve that? uh, Yeah, we 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 just recently were going through some stuff where we were talking about re-architecturing some of the platform uh, for what we wanted to do. And, you know, ultimately, my my kind of thought my my presentation back to the team was we're not doing that because it doesn't support our immediate goals right our immediate goals are we have to get these you know products deployed and and get them out and again save water what we're talking about or what you guys are talking about yes it's a good idea for the future but we're not there yet right Mm -hmm. and we're going to spend and i think you see this a lot right where uh you know the the common there's an there's a common adage in in like the entrepreneurial world where it's like if you're not embarrassed by your first deployment then you waited too long Right. Mm-hmm. Like you got to be embarrassed. Like the first time we released Waterfall, it was like, I, I wouldn't be happy. Right. People if I, if I paid, it. if I paid top right, dollar right, for right. it. Right. But we, we did a free, free trial with some friends and family and, you know, you know, whatever. Right. And, and we've learned from that. And I think that's part of kind of this, this idea of ideas are dime a dozen. Uh, and execution is where it's at. So yeah, we've had times where the team member like, oh, we should do this. We should do that. And I'm like, yeah, we should. We'll add it to the board and we'll look at it when we get time. Yeah, but yeah. right now our goal is here. Are the checks, the, right? this is the checklist. This you is need, it. You need to check off the checklist. And first. I think that's where you really have to, I mean, anytime you want to, like I said, whether it's yourself, a team, a company, whatever, you got to put your goal in front of you. What's the problem you're trying to solve, right? It's the same, same way when you come up with the idea for the product, right? Like the same, same with you. Like what's the problem trying to solve? I'm trying to get an A on this test. Okay, cool. So what yeah. is that going to take? I got to study. I got to do the homework. I got to do this, 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 right? And and you work backwards from that. Yeah, and I think um, for people who have really good ideas, they, in a sense, I think that's the basis of when we come up with an idea, we kind of go through that, but almost like a mock, really yeah. fast way of doing it. And then the problems or the things that we come up with as far as problems that we can't solve by ourselves end up being overwhelming and people are like oh screw that yeah yeah. or i'll keep that idea on the back burner because i don't know how to go forward with it but 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 i think that's where like i said some some ideas and some problems uh in it in their totality are almost impossible to solve but if you if you break them up into very small pieces Mm -hmm. you can always solve those small pieces and eventually you'll get to a point where it starts to tip and you're like okay now i get it like now we can solve this whole thing right it's like like i said go back to studying right if you if you want to read 500 pages in one night it's going to be tough yeah. right it's going to re- read and retain mm-hmm. otherwise you got to break it up into smaller problems right 50 page 50 page 50 page and, and, and get then, through it right? and then some people like to cut corners and, and then you find out and that's the thing that's on the test and then yeah. you're like oh crap like yeah. what's <laughs> you know? that old saying uh lazy people work twice as hard exactly yeah yeah so and, and i and i think that's kind of how it works in in this game too uh that's not to say we haven't made mistakes that's not to say that we haven't like redid stuff uh, there's definitely there's definitely been issues where we like say hey, you know what this is not the right way of doing it and we got to go back and redo it from you know ground up again mm-hmm. um, with what we've learned right because I think uh, again a lot of it is you make certain assumptions you make certain assumptions about what you think is true 
And then as you learn whether those assumptions are true or not, then you have to re reevaluate your decision-making process, right? If I assume something is, you know, like, oh, this part's going to be cheap and we can